We have been talking about him. We have been teasing that he was going to be joining us on today's show. And he is officially here, baby. Starting nose tackle number 57 for your Pittsburgh Steelers, Montrevis Adams. How we doing, man? How have you been just adapting to Pittsburgh, bro? Man, Pittsburgh has been a blessing for me, man. I'm just be honest. Uh, It's been blessing and it's been great from day one since I stepped here last year, you know what I'm saying, coming from New Orleans. Um, I ain't got nothing but, nothing but great to say about it, man. It really been good for me. No, I love to hear that, man. I love to hear that. What is your favorite thing about the city? Favorite thing about the city? Uh, I guess I would say, uh, I probably would say, uh, what's it called? Uh, Kennywood. Hey, okay, okay. You yeah, big, man, big roller coaster dude, man. Yeah, man. I'll be taking my kids out there. Man. Oh, that's you dope. Saying the kids, man. So we'll be having a good little time. Let's go. Shout out to shout out to that home life too, man. I like that balance right there, man. What's your, what's your top it ride? Definitely, definitely, definitely come come in handy. Yo. What's your top ride there? <laughs> uh the food. <laughs> I love my kids. I love my kids. Hey, do you, have, do you have the potato patch fries? <laughs> I'm gonna let. Right, I'm gonna let those. Uh, I'm gonna let them rise. I'm gonna let my kids have them. <laughs> no, I definitely feel you on that. <laughs> what about your biggest? I know you said you love the city. Do you have a big pet peeve though? Uh, big pet peeve. Um, no, nah, not really, man. It's just, uh, honestly, just being in the city, like, it's been nice. Like, uh, different from the other places I've been. It's kind of more like I'm, I'm known a little bit. Uh, but the people are still friendly. Uh, people be happy to see me. So, for me, man, it's, man, that's why I always say, man, it's been great. No, I love that, one. man. And trust me, man, the fans, man, they've been appreciative of you as well. I know me as an alumni, man, I've been enjoying you since you've been here. Just your productivity, yeah, your man. consistency hey, hey, across I, I the board, man. You. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate your support for me. No, nah, no doubt, no doubt, man. And speaking of you coming on to the Steelers, man, just talk about how did you find out? Because obviously you were on the Saints practice squad at that time. So just take us through when you got that call that, hey, man, the Steelers have signed you and you're, you know, flying up out of this thing. Honestly, man, and that's why I praise the guys that, you know, get cut and picked up and shipped to another team because what people, I think, forget sometimes is that this person, like, for instance, me, I was in New Orleans. We had just, you know, they had the hurricane. Mm-hmm. So we was we was living in Texas for the first month or so. Oh, wow. Came back. Okay. Came back to New Orleans. I literally had just got a house. I had a house and stayed in it for two days. Oh, my goodness. That third day... Pittsburgh was calling me. It was that Sunday. They just lost to uh, um, the Bengals. Okay. And, man, I was on the flight Monday morning, uh, 6 in the morning, you know what I'm saying, headed to Pittsburgh. So, like, I didn't I didn't even get to stay in my house. You know what I mean? Wow. So, I had to switch and oh get a hotel. Here. So, it's just the, the, how fast everything moved. But when I got to Pittsburgh, it was easy. Yeah. And not because of me. It was just because of the people that was around me from the D line and people like Cam and mm-hmm. Tyson and uh Milk, uh Chris Wormley, like just That's some good dudes right there, here, man. man. Them good leaders right there. Cause, Cause the thing that I say is is if if everybody willing to let everybody buy in, because you have those guys sometimes that um just cause we play the same position, like uh it's it's competitive. Mm-hmm. And I understand that, but at the end of the day, I want to see the next man eat, and hopefully he want to see the same so collect- collectively we can win. But uh, you have those teams sometimes that don't, but luckily I fell here, and, man, the D-line was a blessing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, just honestly. Now, following like, up could, with I, that. I, I went into those games. You know, I came on yeah. Monday, so I got here on Monday. I, I, I went into those games, like, that, especially the first one. That was the first week. I didn't even know that playbook. <laughs> if it weren't for those guys on the field, man, I wouldn't have been able to do nothing. Hey, you throw you in that fire, man. <laughs> yeah, man. I just told myself and told them, I'm going to just run and have fun, man. And I'm going to let everything else take care of itself. No, no doubt. No doubt. And I did want to follow up. Um, you had said, you know, just in the sense of, man, obviously here in Pittsburgh, a lot of the guys are selfless. Um, just because you play the same position, we know it's a natural competitive element, but here, we're able to just say, hey, man, we want to see everybody eat. Young guy, old guy, that's the energy. For you individually, though, how has that been for you? Is that a, a mindset or temperament that you've always had as well? Or is that something that you had to kind of get used to in terms of uh, being able uh, to say, hey? Mm-hmm. 
me personally, I feel like that's something I kind of already had. It just was now you got to fit into a group where either most of them are like that or everybody is like that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. this group, one, that's one thing I can say from bottom to the top, from the first dude to the last dude. They great people, great men. You know what I'm saying? Like besides this football, they want to see the next man win. Yeah. And when they come to this football, they really want to see the next man win. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and if you can be on that field with whoever out there, and you can help them, and that's all they want. Can you take us through your NFL draft story? I read that you became a father on the same the day same that day you were drafted. Day. So, can you take us through that day? Where were that you when you found like out when you were insane, drafted? Man. Did you have a TV <laughs> like, on? Like, yeah, what was going on? Man, it was crazy. Um, that night, that first night of the draft, you know, I didn't get picked. So, uh, we was at my uh, dad's house having a little get together. And me and my lady, we left, went back to my mom's house, and we walking around the road. And she just, uh, I had a visit to. Who was it? Who was it? Tampa Bay. I had Tampa Bay and I think the Redskins scheduled. And man, my financial advisor, man, him was on the phone. My lady was in the in the room and he was like, Man, I don't think you should go to those visits just cause of, you know, the baby was coming. Yeah. And I kid you not, it wasn't a minute or so afterwards. She she was coming out of the room and she was like, I think I need to go to the hospital. So we <laughs> went to the hospital probably like two, three, four that night. Or it was in the morning, of course, but uh that morning. She, we went up to Warner Robins, and she, by the time the uh, second day of the draft came, man, I was in there. She was laying in the bed. We, I'm, I'm wow. trying to see my son. I'm watching it on the TV. <laughs> my agent come in. My agent let me know, like, man, it was a crazy day. Oh, it was, my it, gosh. It was a blessing, though, man. It was a blessing, but it was a crazy day. I guess it explains why my oldest son, he just kind of, like, he just into football. Like, yeah. Just naturally. <laughs> Man, that's a dope story right there, man. Like that's got to be like what a top that's, top that's day of your life, maybe right? Day. Holy top cow! Day, man. Top hey, it, it, it was definitely great for me. <laughs> I was like, man, you just winning across the board right there, man. No, that's dope as heck. I'm, I'm definitely glad to hear that. And um, for those that don't know, obviously you went in the third round, uh, the 93rd overall selection to the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, and and before you say that, yeah. I, I I know that I know this y'all show, but I just want to tell y'all something. I don't know if y'all know this. Me. Chris Wormley and Larry Ogunjobi was in the same draft, same third round, and we went in order. What? Wait, really? I did and not know that, man. Pittsburgh. Yo, that's dope. That's crazy, yeah. Now, did y'all know each other prior to coming to Pittsburgh as well? Well, I knew I knew Chris. I knew of Larry, but I knew Chris because me and Chris, uh, we trained together out in uh, California in Santa Ana. Getting ready for the draft and getting ready for the combine and everything. Yo, that's crazy. Small world, man. And now all three of y'all here helping the good guys get W's. I like it. Yes, sir. I like it. Let's go. But, yeah, as I was saying, man, you did go in the third round to the Green Bay Packers. So just talk about, you know, a little bit of what that was like, man, doing your four years there. Uh, in what aspect you want to talk about? Um, Just in the sense of, man, your first exposure to the NFL level, man, um, you know, the transition from being at Auburn University and even being a guy from Georgia to moving to Wisconsin, you know? Well, you know, that first transition, it was me being <laughs> used to that cold. <laughs> but, uh, well, so you're from the that, South man, South, man, yeah. Yeah, yeah, most definitely, most definitely. I'm talking about, like, no snow. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, man, it, it was good besides the snow, man. The people, the people was great. Like, I had some wonderful teammates. And one thing I do want to say, I never really leave him out, but I definitely want today. And that's my coach, uh, Jerry Montgomery. My mm, okay. coach. Like, man, he w- I just feel like he one of the best teachers out there. And I feel like the difference, like a lot of people say it's the speed of the game from college to the NFL. Mm-hmm. But I really think it's your knowledge of the game because I feel like your knowledge helped the game slow down. And with me having him from year two to four, man, it was it was great. You know what I'm saying? I feel like a lot of people get a lot of good good coaches, but you don't always get a good teacher. No, you and, absolutely and that's right. What, that's, what, that's what he was for me. And uh, I feel like that's what helped keep me here. You know what I'm saying? If I'm being honest. 
No, I respect that, man. And no, that's that's very wise of you as well, man. When you talk about the game slowing down, it is because you know what to expect. You're no longer right, right. And, reacting and, and, to it. You're anticipating it now, you know? Right. And one thing I always can be honest about is I was a good football player coming into the league, but I wasn't. It was out for instincts. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It, I wasn't a good fundamental player. I wasn't a good hands a two gap guy oh no you, you gonna get off saying? that rock i i, I, I yeah, check yeah, your yeah, tape yeah, yeah you, you know get off saying? that rock you disrupt yeah right so i just i just appreciate me having that teacher to teach me really how to play football how mm-hmm. to see what's going on like give you the cheat codes to the game yeah no i definitely respect that man now with that being the case though we know you know the quarterback that was out there and that's aaron Rodgers, man this is a guy that you know is a future mm-hmm. first ballot hall of famer what was that experience like for you? Because obviously you play with two Hall of Fame quarterbacks in terms of Ben and Rodgers, but just in the sense of being with Rodgers, what was that experience like as well? Man, it's crazy because I see all the – or I hear all the outside talking, you know, with, with media or, or you might have friends and family yeah. that might ask you about them, and they already got a perception. But it's like, man, A-Rod is one of the coolest uh, – I don't even know what you would call it. Jokester, <laughs> like jokester type yeah. guys. Like, man, like, and, and, and even when I had my injuries at all, I mean, not at all, but at Green Bay, like we had a similar injury. He was, he was, he would come talk to me about the injury, just making sure I was good mentally to Let's come go. back. I remember, I remember when I was first getting there, I was doing good at practice. Came and talked to me about little things, you know, what he see, what he could help with. Like, man, like, he's the ultimate competitor. And, like, like I was telling uh, some of the guys today at practice, it's just, like, certain little things he would do at practice and you understand why it's so good and it looked that good in the game. Mm. For example, like, if the defense is um, – they switch into another person there yeah. at practice, he going to catch them at practice with 12 Ooh. men on the field. Okay, you know okay. So, so when we get in the game and that happens, it ain't no surprise. <laughs> you know what that's I'm what he does absolutely like that, that's really what he do like when they say like you practice how you play in the game like that's that like that's what he is let's go now i like that right there and then obviously we said on the flip side you did get a chance to play with you know ben roffsberger i mean we are you know everybody loves him here in pittsburgh man two-time super bowl champ and like you said another future first ballot hall of famer in his own right what was that experience like as well? Not necessarily comparing and contrast, but just in his own, you know, vein in that sense. Uh, man, for me, I think it was a, just another great thing to, to, to get to see another shoot, great Hall of Fame quarterback. You know what I mean? Mm. Because everybody different. Right. So you get uh, you get to pick pick those in and out. So like the game, you get to pick their brain. Like I just think for me, it's great because how smart they are as men and as players. Because, I mean, we don't always talk about – and even in Green Bay, we don't always talk about football. Like, it's taxes, it's money, it's how I can keep this money. Like, it's we talk about some of everything. So, yeah. like, I just appreciate, the, you know, them being some older, you know, uh, wise guys that can help me in any way. Now you're absolutely right, man. You're absolutely right. And you can never have enough of that type of advice either, man. So, and it's also dope right. that you actually, like, are open to receiving it because as you know in the league man not everybody is open to that type of situation right there man but um nah, that, yeah that's definitely true yeah but i also want to ask you this man um we obviously know transitioning from green bay to new orleans your roles were changing you know sometimes you're starting sometimes you're not sometimes you're on the active um in terms of active 53 man for the game day and things like that but then you go to new orleans and it's practice squad just a lot of movement right how did you yeah, yeah. remain confident, though, in yourself, in your abilities through all of that? Like you said, you, you come in. If, yeah. if I'm being honest, my, my story kind of started from Green Bay leaving. And it just was like uh, mentally uh, after that uh, second injury. I just don't know if I was all the way there. Mm. And, 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 and I don't know if I could have stayed there. Uh, nothing against them, but it's just. That's where I was in life at the time. And uh, that's why I appreciate, like, I know a lot of people don't know, but after I left Green Bay, Steelers was the first team to offer. What? You know what I'm saying? But I ended up going to, I ended up going to the Patriots. You know what I mean? And, okay. Uh, uh, for the Patriots, man, I just th- that's why I love my journey because I feel like 
my journey was gonna lead me here anyway because like when I left Green Bay, I was I was still hurt, you know what I'm saying? So Bill gave me what he gave me just off of film and just trusting that I could do what he wanted. Mm. You know what I mean? So even though I didn't get it and I didn't make that team, like I was still happy that he gave me the opportunity to play again and t- and to get me healthy. That's mm. what the Patriots did. They got me healthy. And from there, it was to New Orleans, and it's like, okay, now I'm healthy. All right, let me get what? Let me get my feet wet. Okay, and I feel okay. like uh, at that time and after and coming to here, it was just like, all right, I've had what I needed. I've had me a teacher. I've had time to get healthy. I've had time to get my feet back wet. Okay, now let's just run and have fun. We're going to go up here. We're going to listen. We're just going to run and have fun. We're going to see where it takes us. And they brought me back here for another two years. And actually, that's a perfect transition because I did want to ask, what was the difference this time around? You said you had decided against coming to Pittsburgh, the front end. But this offseason, you do sign a nice two-year extension, man. And I was very happy to see that you did sign to come back here because we definitely needed you. But, yeah, what went into that decision this offseason? And did you have any other teams that you might have considered as well? Yeah, I had like two to three other teams, but I just think like after coming here last year, if I'm being honest, it didn't it didn't matter what team it was. I wasn't I wasn't leaving Pittsburgh. Mm, okay. And it was just really, man, the morale that they helped me with, uh, to give me back, um the confidence. I mean, it was just kinda all around. Uh with Mike T being a player's coach, man, you know, giving guys a little freedom. Like, you know what I'm saying? I ain't saying I'm the best. I ain't saying I'm the worst. But when they treat you like a person, like an individual, like, it's great. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you matter. Like, Absolutely. It's just, it's just, it's just them the guys you go out there and you, man, you'll do whatever for. And i do whatever for Mike T, man. And no that's, just me. that's just honest. And it's a lot of us alumni that's played under him to feel the exact same way, man. So 100%, hey, most, I know what you're saying, man. <laughs> it's different, man, with him, man. Now, obviously, you mentioned Mike T. You've been around some other pretty impressive coaches. Packers, I guess that was McCarthy back then, right? Yeah. But then yeah. you already mentioned yeah. Belichick yeah. and also Sean Payton. Sean Payton yeah. Can you yeah, talk sure. about what sets Mike T apart? Because there's talk with the record, you know, being one for people in the media, the fans and everything talking about, like, firing Tomlin. So can you talk those people off the ledge? What makes Mike Tomlin great as a coach and what sets him apart? Man, I think it's the details. I think it's the way that we approach every game. I mean, you know, we we have our struggles. But me looking at it and being here, like, even if I wasn't here, this is not a 1-14. in It's a – it's team that has that too. Plenty, Absolutely. Plenty injuries talent. are killing us right now. Mm-hmm. We just we just not putting the full pieces together, but when they do start clicking, it's gonna click and it's mm-hmm. gonna be scary. Because one thing I do know is, man, like I, I just feel like we have a lot of talent here, mm-hmm. guys. Like we working and to get back on my team, man. The way he set up the the meetings, his his word play. Like man, it's 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 just amazing. Like I ain't gonna lie, sometimes I almost feel like I'm in church. Like I'm in there, <laughs> like I'm in there writing writing down like they ain't they ain't notes. But it's, it's words that he say that can like that I feel like like yeah. besides this football, like they help me as a man. And he's and speaking life. that life stuff, absolutely. Yeah, man. It, 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 it just like that's why I love sports, man. I just feel like it relates so much, man. And I just. I just love to hear him talk. Even yeah. if I wasn't, I wasn't playing, man, I might could just sit in here and just listen to him. No, you're absolutely right, man. You be over here like, hey, man, coach, yep, keep preaching. Huh? I hear you, coach, yep. Yeah, That's man. how he roll. That's how he rolls, man. Now, I did also want to bounce back just a little bit to, you know, your decision to go to Auburn University, man, for college. Like, what was what went into that decision right there? Well, if I'm being honest, I, was, I know a lot, you know, some of my closer friends might know. But if I'm being honest, man, one of my favorite schools was always Clemson. Mm. That was my first offer. Okay. Uh, from 10th grade to 11th. Uh, I, I love Coach Sweeney. I still feel like we got a pretty good relationship to this day. You said he offered uh, you in 10th grade? Yes, sir. Dang, yes, sir. you big time, man. <laughs> dang, you no, big no, time. You, you, no. you got to yeah, yeah. offer in 10th grade? Yo, no, let's go, man. man. <laughs> 
I don't care what no one say, but, man. You got clips in the tenth grade, man. That's big time. Let's get it. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate it, man. But really, I feel like a transition happened. I was seven. I'm gonna tell you how I was thinking. I'm 17 at the time. I'm like, okay, my favorite school is Clemson, but I felt that if I went and balled out in the ACC versus the SEC, I had a better chance of, you know, making more money and yeah. being able to take care of my family. That was just that was where my mind was at that time. So I was like, okay. I love Clemson, but I'm going to go SEC. And when it came down to it, it was like I didn't want to stay home in Georgia. And it was after that, it was really just out of Alabama and Auburn. And if I'm being honest, man, I didn't want to be the top dog. I wanted to be the underdog. Mm, I wanted to be the team that, okay. that, knocked, that knocked them off. You know okay. what I'm saying? And, and that's, really just, that's really how it happened. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I do love Auburn, and I appreciate that journey. But uh, part of that was, you know, I didn't want to go to Alabama because, I mean, I just feel like if I went to Alabama, it's the same thing. We're going to have another yeah. first round, second round D-line. It don't matter if it's me or not. Uh-huh. Uh, we're going to have these award finalists, award winners, and we're going to win national championships. But it's like, what did we do different? We just kept a legacy going. And that's great. But it's great to uh, create a new one. Mm-hmm. I love that mentality. That's dope. Like, because a lot of times you hear it the other way. Man, I didn't get offered by Alabama. I didn't get offered by this school. At least that's how my journey was. So it's like oh, man, honest, Alabama Alabama was my second offer, and that's what really made the rest of my offers come <laughs> in. <laughs> Tom, t- t- did they offer you in 10th grade too? I'm just I need to know. Did you get Bim in 11, 10th grade? 11, man? Okay, 11. okay. All right. I was about to say, man, God damn. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty dope, man. That is pretty dope right there. Now, yeah, I'm sure you're uh, in tune with social media. Have you ever heard of a butt retweet? <laughs> a, a, a butt retweet? Do, do you know a what happened retweet. all this week with uh, Cam Hayward? Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's been floating out, man. Uh, no, I, I don't <laughs> even know what happened. Uh, should we explain it to him? Uh, explain it to him. Uh, I mean, I feel like I know what a butt retweet is, but I, I, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, he, he tweeted. Something came out that... It it didn't come off good. We'll just put yeah, it, it to that it, one. He, it, and he it explained it as a yeah. He explained it as a butt retweet. I just never heard of that. It was a, it, it's usually a butt dial, but yeah. a butt retweet. That uh, I don't know. That's seems like a, I mean, I don't hey, know, man, a poor the way these phones is today, so I can't find it out. <laughs> That's what he said. He doubled down on it on the <laughs> he did, podcast. He, he was like, yeah, I don't know. It was just in my pocket. Then I, I checked my phone, and everyone's saying, dude, your your Twitter's going crazy right now. You have to ask him about it. Well, Cam opened that I, door. I feel, like I, I feel like I had one on Instagram. There you it know? is. Uh, there it is. <laughs> so I definitely understand a little bit. You know what? I, I think I'm going to use that excuse next time. I, I like a retweet. Something I ain't supposed to like retweet. Babe, that was that butt retweet. You know I ain't like that post, babe. That was a butt like. I ain't mean to like that. Yeah. You know the one I think of, though, is <laughs> when you're like dozing off while scrolling. Mm. I think that's, that's that dangerous. could have been a better excuse. That's dangerous. Me. All right. Here's another one for you, then. Uh, just like as a, a goofy <laughs> little question here. This goes back to last year because Kevin Dotson had an infamous tweet that he said he could take down a cheetah if it ever came yeah. down to like a 1v1 match. So we're trying to ask everyone that comes on the podcast if they think they could also take down a cheetah. Zach Banner, he had he answered this question as well. What, what, what we just had on last week? I forgot. It was mostly without they've answered this question though. Yeah. Could you take down a cheetah 1v1? Uh so <laughs> I guess I need a little bit more detail. So like, <laughs> yeah, are we in an think, octagon? Okay, yeah, what is it? No, no, no. Hey, hey. You, you one-on-one, you're in the wild. Is oh, you, no weapon. is cheated. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no weapon. No hand, like no knives, no guns. It's just you, this cheated, but it's for survival. It's for your life. Back against the wall. You making out of there or not? I think so. Ooh. I think I'm making it. Okay. I think I'm making it out. Well, shoot. And, and if I don't, if I don't, that cheetah ain't, ain't messing with no more humans. Ooh, <laughs> let's go. See, I like that approach right there. I figured you, when you offered by Clemson in 10th grade and Bam in 11th grade, yeah, you probably can't take out a cheetah. For me, I was <laughs> like, you know what? The cheetah probably going to get me, but I'm a little bit smaller than you. So that might make some sense right there. So you know what? I believe that you can get that cheetah. Or he ain't going to mess with nobody else. So as long as you get him first, I think I'm all right. I like that. Hey, most deaf, most deaf. I like I that you, right I there. I like that. All right. Hey, I got you. So I said, man, two more. Uh, I had two more questions for you, man, before I, uh, I'm finished with you. But um, I did want to ask you, man, you've been in this league now. This is your seventh season. 
you know, and you've obviously played a ton of games, man. Played a ton of, uh, had a ton of snaps, ton of productivity. But do you have a favorite play of your career that just sticks out that you're always just fond of when you think of? A favorite, uh, just from the NFL, right? Yeah, it's just NFL. Yep. Favorite play. I mean, if you want to include some college, you can include that as well. You know, we were just trying to give you the baseline and the direction, but yeah. you can hey, 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 feel feel free. I mean, I guess I guess it would have to be my uh, my first sack in um in the uh, in the playoffs last year. Okay, okay, let's um, get it. Uh, I guess I guess my home. Yeah, no, I like yeah, that. I guess, I guess that would have to be uh, one of, one of my favorite ones. All right, all right, and then the final one I have for you is talk about your welcome to the NFL moment, that moment where it officially hit you, whether it was a good play or something, you know, where you getting worked, but either way, where you just like, you know what? If, if, if I'm being honest, my welcome to the NFL moment wasn't on the field. It was mm, in the okay. building. And I feel like that moment was, this is a business. Mm. It's not college. This is your job. Like, yeah. Just like a nine to five with anybody else. And it was like I remember this rookie. He came in with me. He got cut rookie uh, rookie camp, but they bring him back in like right before the season. I remember talking to him, and he was like, "Man, I feel like I got a uh, like a, a, a some kind of scratch something in his calf." And I'm mm. like, "Bro, I'm like I'm new. I don't know a lot, but I know it's not good to always be in the training room." Mm. And I seen him a few minutes later, and they was walking him back out the door. He had just got his eye. <laughs> oh, just got signed, and they cut him the same day. God. And like that was like, uh, I'm like, okay. Oh like, man, we, we at work. Yeah, yeah. It is cut though, like that. You play this game, and you start seeing them just trash bag, throw all this uniform in there, bring yeah, next man. guy in there. You like, God, dog, like. We don't need to wait 24 hours no more. All right. It's yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, bro. It would be crazy. No, absolutely, man. Absolutely. But no, man, we definitely appreciate you taking some time in to hop on with us, man. We hope that, you know, you're recovering well and you'll be fully healthy come Sunday, man. But yeah, man, like I said, man, definitely appreciate you though, stopping by on the podcast with us. Yes, sir. I'm trying to get everything right right now. Let's just go. Little, just got me a little dry needle in. So there yeah, it is. No, nah, we right, definitely no, appreciate, it, appreciate it, man. Yeah, that was a blast. All right. Yes, peace. sir. I definitely appreciate it. Yeah, I Hell thank yeah. y'all for letting me on the show. All yeah. right. Peace, bro.